All right, welcome back, everybody. Once again, it is me, the J to the E to the double F3. This is Jeffrey Harris, and you're listening to the 411 Wrestling Interviews Podcast. I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe through this crazy, crazy pandemic era. But the good news is we have an exclusive interview uh, for today. It is former WWE superstar, former Total Divas cast member, Ava Marie, now known as Natalie Ava Marie. She is starring in a new movie opposite Bruce Willis and Jesse Metcalf called Hard Kill. And uh, we talked about uh, that movie with her in her WWE career. So we're going to be sharing that new interview, an exclusive one-on-one interview with Natalie Ava Marie. It's coming up right now. So stay tuned on the 411 Wrestling Interviews Podcast. Hey, good morning or good afternoon, Natalie. How are you? I'm excellent. How are you? I'm better than Custer. Thank you for asking. This is Jeffrey Harris for the 411 Wrestling Interviews Podcast. First and foremost, thank you for speaking with me today. It's a great honor and pleasure to be talking about your movie, Hard Kill. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Okay, so this is a new movie. Uh, you worked on with Jesse Metcalf and uh, Bruce Willis, but uh, what made you want to work on the movie, other than the fact that you're in a movie with Jesse Metcalf and Bruce Willis? <laughs> um, you know, I think it's because uh, I love action films um, to begin with, but ultimately the fact that I was able to play a mercenary was something just kind of on my bucket list because my brother-in-law currently serving in the uh, military but the army, my dad is a, a Vietnam vet in the Marines. So, um, you know, I have so much love and respect for our armed services. So to be able to play the baddest on the big screen was something that I was like, oh, I'm in. Let's do this. It's time to rock. Your character in the movie, Sasha, she's an experienced, uh, you know, U.S. military soldier. You know, she knows hand-to-hand combat. She knows how to operate heavy artillery she can she's not a damsel in distress at all so with that in mind is this a more appealing type of character for you and how do you like getting to live in like the persona of this character oh i love it i I think it's it's awesome you know i I think it's really important um you know i just love the way this character is written um and she saw she can handle her own and she doesn't need anybody's help um however you know obviously Sometimes you need to take some help from other people, but uh, she's a badass. And to be able to take that um, and portray it on the big screen was something that I was really, really excited about. Okay, so did you have to do, was there a lot of comprehensive fight training and uh, and weapons training to get you ready for this uh, picture? Um, You know what, I, I decided to go ahead on my own, and I trained with, my husband and I actually went out and we trained with James to do all the weapon training because um, I wanted to be the most prepared that I possibly could be while getting on, on set, and, and we did have weapon and fight training once we got there, but like I always say, it's better to be over-prepared than to rely on anything once you arrive to any place or for any job in that matter. So I, t- I took it upon myself to go ahead and um, train before even getting to set. You did all your own stunts, right, Natalie? Because it looks like it's it's you doing everything the whole time. Yeah, it's me. Oh wow, I'm just I'm just so impressed because when you see fight scenes like that and it's not constantly having to cut the whole time, to me that makes mm-hmm. the action so much better. Don't you agree? I agree. I, I feel you know you you definitely get to. Um, kind of you just it just feels a little bit more authentic um but you know i was just able to handle whatever we had to do uh within the movie so i was fortunate enough to be able to do it all now what's it like though you know you're walking onto a movie set you're sharing scenes and dialogue with the one and only the icon the legend bruce (laughs) willis what is what is that like I know, it's actually really, really crazy. Uh, I had to, of course, play it cool. And then, obviously, I'm doing an action film with one of the biggest action 
movie stars in the world. Everybody knows who Bruce Willis is. Um, and I had to play it cool and keep it together. But, you know, in my head, I was running little little previous lines from, like, Die Hard is one of my favorite movies. So, uh, you know, I had to play it cool and not ask him to repeat certain lines or something like that. So you- I basically... I basically had to, uh, you know, push that out of my mind. And all I did was, once I got on set, is anything that he took, especially any type of advice or anything like that, uh, you know, I tried to soak it up like a sponge. Now, did you have to, like, bite your tongue to keep yourself from just randomly randomly yelling out, Welcome to the party, pal! <laughs> um, that one and the yippee ki I had to, I had to bite my tongue on that one. Yeah, yeah. You're probably like, sure. I would be just, I would be trying to play cool, but inside I would be screaming internally, just like trying to contain my emotions. But oh, for that sure. is so cool. For sure. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. I mean, I had to, I've gotten pretty lucky. Uh, two of my first films, you know, um, my first film was with Nicolas Cage, Faye Dunaway, Gina Gershon, and Nikki Whelan, and I had to bite my tongue too, because like, Nicolas Cage, come yeah. on. They done. They done away. I mean, you're talking about Academy Award winners. Then I get my second movie, and I'm with Bruce Willis. It's like, okay, I'm trying to keep it together as best as I could, and to to learn from the best and soak it up for for my next projects. Now we did get to meet your family. We got to see you with your family on uh, back in the day on Total Divas. So, yes, knowing what we know about your family, like, do you just like to call them up and just be like, oh yeah, just reading lines with Bruce Willis, no big deal. Sorry, gotta go. Any, 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 you know what? any texts or phone conversations like that? It's really funny because my family, they definitely do not have any type of problem for making sure I stay as humble as pie because they do not, uh, <laughs> it does not really phase them whatsoever. However, today, especially, it is my mom's birthday, the big seven zero. And oh. her and my dad are in town, so we're going to have a, um, we have a full house, basically, so this weekend, and then the premiere is on uh, Monday for Hard Kill, so it's a good reason for my all my brothers, nieces, and nephews to come out and uh, celebrate not only the 70th, but also the premiere of the movie, which oh. is really cool. Well, but they definitely, they don't, they don't, they don't give me any claps, they don't clap <laughs> their hands for me or anything at all. Wow. Well, but that's lovely, and happy birthday to your mother. I'm so glad you're getting to see your family, especially uh, you. especially right now with all just the yes. craziness in the world. All right. Now, if you don't mind, uh, let's go back to April 6, 2014. The night was WrestleMania. You got to be a part of the Divas title match uh, with AJ Lee, the Bella Twins, uh, Alicia Fox, many other superstars. So what was that like to be a part of a uh, title ma- match at WrestleMania uh, back at that point in your career? Uh, everything. I mean, honestly, just being a part of any type of WrestleMania moment is huge. I always refer to it for uh, to people that aren't into wrestling. It's like the Super Bowl of, of wrestling. And it's something that, you know, I did not take lightly because... You know, anybody that is a superstar, your whole hope is to be a part of that big show. And the fact that I was not only a part of it, but I was amongst so many other uh, uh, divas, it was, it was truly wild. Do you remember anything specific about that night? I know it was six and a half years ago, but like anything like anything you were feeling? Were you feeling nervous or dizzy at all? Uh, like, oh my God. what was the feeling yes. like going in there? Um... All of the above, you know, nervous, uh, dizzy, like wanting to pinch myself, um, and trying to enjoy the moment, but also terrified as well. And but so excited and happy all in the one. It was like such an overwhelming experience. Now, um, the day you parted ways with WWE in two thousand seventeen, um. Do you remember what was on the mind the day you um, notified WWE and put in your notice? You know, it was one of those things where it, it, I don't really feel like it was ever, although it may have seemed like that, but it was definitely a, a mutual decision of us given the time because I was uh, filming some films at the time. So it was more along the lines of, uh, you know, getting kind of the 
permission in the sense to go ahead, film the TV and films that I was doing. And then, uh, you know, hopefully when it makes the most sense for me to come on back and vice versa, back and forth. But I didn't feel like I ever really walked away. Mm -hmm. Uh, If that makes sense, it was kind of more along the lines of I'll be back soon. Okay. But the day it happened, like, did anyone try to contact you with WWE and maybe talk you out of it or maybe talk things over, like, think it over a week? Was there, were there any conversations like that? Um, no, it was kind of a, a kind of a mutual agreement uh, between both of us. Um, and it was kind of the best. And this was so supportive of TV, film, and, and kind of, he's the one that gave me my the permission to do my first film because I had to dye my hair black. So if he didn't give me that, that okay or that green light and wasn't as supportive, um, then I wouldn't have been able to do that project. So, you know, he's definitely been my number one supporter my entire career. So it was just kind of a, a mutual decision at that very moment. Um, now, I mean, WWE, they do have their hands in many pies these days between, you know, digital series uh, co-producing, yeah. they're co-producing films with Netflix, um, and all sorts of stuff. Do you foresee yourself ever working with them again, maybe with that or, or even in a new TV project at some point in the future? Oh, for sure. With WWE, WWE is my number one. They're always my family. They're always definitely, I'm forever grateful for them. Um, they've supported me with everything that I've done. So for me, if it makes the most sense to come back for, uh, a Netflix show that they're doing or collaborating with, um, or back to the program in some form, 100% I'm all in. Uh, how does it make you feel when, uh, you know, the women's champion, the champ champ, Bailey, when she's like, you know, come on back sister. And she wants to see you back in WWE. Um, I love Bailey. I feel like that was for me. Uh, I mean, I just got the chills right now because, she is the full package. I, I mean, I love her character, what she's doing right now on TV, but just the fact she's the ultimate superstar and most supportive. And I mean that in the sense of she has no problem bringing in somebody and teaching them the ropes, teaching them everything that she knows and has learned along the ways. Because obviously, you know, she's been in the business for a very long time and she's, she's one of the best at, at what she does. So, um, and my storyline with her was probably by far just hands down so memorable and and meaningful to me because of how impactful and how much I learned from her, but also how awesome the audience was invested in, in it. How does it make you feel though, to see that, you know, last year at WrestleMania 35, the women were, they were the main event, the women, like they were the final match at WrestleMania. How did... You know, as a woman who was in the women's division, how does that make you Mm -hmm. feel to finally see that progress? I love it. I think it's great. I feel like a lot of people, um, you know, they want to see the women. They want to see a show. They want to see They want to be entertained and they want, you know, to have it uh, as best as it possibly can be. And if that's a main event and match, then then so be it. And the girls have done nothing but exceeded expectations. each time, day in and day out, each little opportunity that they are given, a little nugget, they kill it. They knock it out of the park. And that also just goes to show um, they deserve the main event or they deserve that pay-per-view spot. Um, and it's awesome. Now, uh, you did mention Bailey er- earlier, but did you have a, a favorite opponent or person you got to work against uh, in WWE or NXT? You did also get to work against the Grand Slam champ, Asuka, and had a match with her. <laughs> Yes, I I loved going against Asuka, um, but I have to say my favorite for sure has to be Bailey, just because of um, how much I had learned from her and how patient she was and how willing and giving she was as a uh, opponent and superstar. I think that's something that is super important and um, extremely respectable too, because she didn't have to do any of that. Now, was there ever an experience um, while you were in WWE? Did any wrestler make you feel welcome or, or, or act like you didn't belong there and you didn't deserve your spot? 
<laughs> I mean, I think that, you know, it's one of those things when you walk into any place, any business, um, what, whatever it is that you do, whether it's a movie set, whether it's your corporate office, you're going to have people wondering how you got there or who is this new person or what's going on. So as long as you're there, you respect whatever it is that is, um, has gone on before you, before you even entered that specific spot. Um, and then you keep your head down and work hard, then you'll earn everybody's respect without a doubt. And that's kind of how it was with me and how I look at it. You know, you, ha- you definitely have a lot of questions and a lot of question marks, but, um, Hey, I'm the youngest of all boys. I'm Mexican Italian and I played on sports teams my entire life. So I have no problem dealing with any type of, um, extra, I guess, maybe pressure. Um, you just go ahead and, and you put in the work. Um, is there anything you took away from your career in WWE that's helped you uh, with your acting career now or, or just life in general? Oh, for sure. I feel like anybody, first of all, WWE superstars are some badass. They are the cream of the crop. They are straight out studs. And to travel on the road 290 days out of the year, to handle all the physicality, to be able to perform live, not mess up, create your character and then go on to the next city, you are you are prepared for everything and more in life in general because you're, you're under so much pressure and you have to be able to be on at the drop of a dime. And if you're not, then you're not going to be on TV. And everybody wants to be on TV. So um, I really am so lucky that I started with WWE prior to anything that I have done TV film because... It has just really molded me into taking all of the things that I learned and characteristics into all of my other projects because the work ethic for every single superstar is they will outwork anybody. I mean, for sure. Were were you ever shy at, at all? Because, you know, not only, you know, were you a WWE superstar, you were featured on the reality show Total Divas and like that's your whole life, your your family life, your marriage all on display. Do you know, do you ever just have to just like put your hands up and go like, "Well, this is me." Um, for I think after season 1, I said, "Well, this is me." <laughs> I think that was the first time uh that I, you know, taking everything in first time um, walking into WWE, first time learning how to wrestle, first time being on the road, first time being on a reality show, then showing my marriage, my personal relationship, then my relationship with my family, my dad's health. Um, so the first year was definitely like kind of like a culture shock and, uh, you know, so brand new and fresh. But after the first year, I'm like, look, this is me. I'm super gonna, I'm not going to change who I am to portray somebody on this reality show that I'm not. So what you see is what you get. And, uh, you either love me or you hate me, I guess. Uh, what would, what was your least favorite thing about like the traveler being on the road that you just, that you don't particularly miss, even though, you know, it was great. You were a WWE super. Was there any aspect you maybe don't miss so much? Um, I think just being on the road and missing family events, um, because those are the types of moments that you can't get back. So I think out of everything, that's the, that's the only really big downfall of, uh, being on the road so frequent that you do miss some, some big life moments. Now, you know, when I think of Vince McMahon, I just think of this larger than life character, um, did you ever have any personal interactions with Vince McMahon where he, where he ever gave you important advice or anything uh, of that nature? Uh, yeah, Vince McMahon, I have a great relationship with him. Um, and he is definitely, anything that he says, you should take it and soak it up like a sponge because clearly he knows what he is doing. And, uh, you know, I just am, am forever grateful to him because he gave me the opportunity. He gave me the shot. He took a chance on some kid that was a nobody, nothing. And he was, he rolled the dice and was like, you know what? I see something in her. Let's see, let's see what, what could happen. And, uh, thank God he did. Now, uh, you also are the host of the show faces and heels for now this news. Uh, can you tell us about this project at all and, uh, and where we can watch it? Yes, Faces and Heels is awesome. It's kind of kind of crazy because 
it reminds me so much of my own experience with Total Divas and being inside of WWE, you know, so I totally can relate in the sense of what these girls are going through, the, the highs, the lows, the struggle. You can watch it on Facebook, um, on my Facebook page, Natalie Eva Marie, um, and, and on now this Facebook page as well. So, um, each week a new episode airs and it basically shows the exact kind of trials and tribulations of what it takes to be a woman wrestler and you're gonna you know kind of fall in love with certain characters and kind of see how they transform how they are created and then how they are able to kind of navigate um the process now uh usa today did pick up uh what happened with you and qantas airlines is is qantas airlines going to change their tune and are they going to you know give you a ticket <laughs> refund or something what happened there natalie <laughs> qantas airlines um honestly that was so long ago it feels like an eternity ago but um you know i wish them well um it was an amazing flight, to be quite honest. So it was just a unfortunate uh, hiccup when we were in Australia heading back to the States. I don't think there was anything <laughs> wrong with what you were wearing for a flight. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't think anything was wrong with what I was wearing either. But, you know, people have their uh, their rules. And all I can say is their, their flight was quite amazing. Um, any advice for any aspiring uh, women's wrestlers or women trying to get into entertainment? You know, con you know, considering you know you did time in WWE, you were on the road, you were a star of a reality show, you got to be in a title match at WrestleMania. You've lived what what a lot of uh, wrestlers, I'm I'm sure, who are coming up would love to do, and now you're you know you're acting opposite Bruce Willis. So, do you have any advice uh, for people looking um, to get into your, either of your professions? Yeah, and it's, I, know, I hate saying it so much because it, it does sound so so cliche, but it's one of those things where you got to keep going. If you want something, you got to keep going because um, you're going to get told no so many times and the door's going to get shut so many times. And especially now, you know, people are, are constantly saying you're not good enough or we're not looking for that, that specific type, which is you. And um, you have to really develop thick skin and realize that it's going to take a lot of hard work and a lot of mental toughness because you ultimately for sure have to believe in yourself that you want this bad enough and uh, you have to go out and get it because no one's going to hand it to you. Uh, you're a global superstar. Your, your YouTube channel, 114,000 subscribers. So congrats on that. Uh, any oh, other thank you. any other projects uh, you have uh, going on you'd love to share with our listeners or readers or anything? Yeah, I have a, a TV series called Paradise City that is coming out in fall, um, this fall, hopefully, if everything goes right. And it, I'm starring opposite of Bella Thorne. Um, there's a, the cast is amazing. There's a ton from some of the Anarchy. Drea De Mateo is in it. Um, we have a ton of Disney star kids. The, the cast is truly amazing, and I'm super fortunate to be amongst um, these guys. And I think that the the audience is really going to take in to this TV series because it is pretty badass. So I'm really excited for that um, to be coming. And then, of course, you know, um, if anybody's looking for ways to work out, um, I have my daily workouts on NatalieEvenMarie.com especially now health is wealth. So breaking a sweat every day is super important and um, they can find me there as well. Okay. So last question, did your parents stop giving you a hard time that you and your husband eloped? <laughs> um, you know what? Kind of. They. It's kind of one of those things we don't really talk about in, in our family. Um, you know, we celebrate the actual wedding day <laughs> ceremony the actual ceremony so um and that's okay with us <laughs> uh, natalie thank you so much for your time this has been one of my favorite interviews ever i'm so uh -huh. happy for all your success um here's to your continued success i hope you have a wonderful time uh with your family uh in your mother's birthday happy birthday to your mother and just thanks uh, for thank you know you. all the entertainment you've given us and the fans and just 
you know, because it's 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 a big sacrifice being a part of WWE. So I really, you know, appreciate all you've done for us. So thank you very much. Uh -huh. and I really appreciate this time and congrats. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Big time. Bye bye. All right. Thank you very much uh, to Natalie uh, Ava Marie for joining us here on the 411 Wrestling Interviews podcast. Really appreciate that time. So her new movie, Hard Kill, it is uh, now in uh, select theaters and it will be available on demand and digital on August 25th. Also, for the 411 Wrestling Interviews podcast, you can listen to us on the 411 Mania YouTube channel on Apple Podcasts on Spotify, on Stitcher, on Google Play. Now, if you're listening to us on YouTube, if you can give us a like, a comment, subscribe to our channel, I would very much appreciate it. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, if you can give us a five-star rating or review uh, on Google Play as well, we would very much appreciate it. But thank you very much more than anything for just giving us a listen, for finding the show. We really appreciate it, especially in times like this. Once again, I am the J to the E to the double F free. This is Jeffrey Harris, and you've been listening to the 411 Wrestling Interviews Podcast. Bye, everybody.